Gentani and welcome to another episode of the Godfather, Godfather Minute. Minute. I'm your host, Alex Robinson. And I'm your co-host, Andy Robinson. And together, collectively, we make up the Godfather, Godfather Minute, Minute Brothers. Co-hosts. And we're here to talk about Minute 146 of the movie. Alex, you made it. I made it? Yeah. To Minute Woo-hoo. 146. Repeat after minute. I never thought I would do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chintani... Uh, I repeat after you. Minuto numero. Cento. Cento. Quaranta sei. Quaranta sei. Cento quaranta sei. You got it. Hmm. Do you think it's more It's more likely that you got to minute 146? What's more likely, you getting to minute 146 or Mo Green creating Las Vegas? Never tell me the odds. <laughs> uh-huh. Speaking Big, of Mo Green. Yeah. Big Mo Green. Uh-huh. You got our summary? Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, we're in Las Vegas. I guess we're about to leave Las Vegas. This is the last Las Vegas uh, scene, I think. Mm-hmm, that's right. Uh, that was Mo- fast. Mo- <laughs> yeah, we were in Sicily for a thousand years. And <laughs> Las Vegas, we're in and out. Uh, Mo Green rejects Mikey's offer to buy him out of the casino and, <laughs> le- <laughs> and leaves in a huff. If that's too soon, he can leave in a minute and a huff. Uh, a flustered Fredo sputters that Mikey shouldn't talk to Mo Green in such a manner. Mikey, in turn, warns his older brother never to take sides against the family. <laughs> Ever. 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 Ever? Never. Pony? I think Fredo asked that back. He would he would ne- <laughs> Ever? <laughs> Ever? Mikey goes, never. <laughs> never. And then he looks at uh, Hagen and he goes, Fredo goes, Ever? <laughs> Fredo goes, never, <laughs> never. <laughs> and then Fredo looks at Johnny because he knows he's sitting there too. Yeah. And he goes, Johnny, ever? <laughs> and he goes, never. <laughs> Actually, when you ask Tom, you go, you go, you go, never? And he goes, never, not now, not 10 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> All right. So, that was um, fun. One thing I noticed, so the minute starts off with him telling Mo Green basically, like, all right, think about it, how much you think about how much you want and let me know. Mm-hmm. And um ten billion dollars, Mikey. That's what he should have said. <laughs> do you th- well <laughs> I wonder how much like how much Mikey would give. You mean how do they calculate a, a reasonable price? Yeah. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. Oh boy, I don't know. And do you calculate the money? Lost due to skimming in those calculations. No, that's just that's just cost of doing business. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> skimming. You get your skimming fee. Skimming fee. All right, so pool boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Mo, yeah, Mo Green got his started. Got his experience in the pool business. He was skimming at an early age. <laughs> <laughs> There's not even a life preserver <laughs> or a buoy. <laughs> Or a life god chair. <laughs> it was too <laughs> it was too risky to have a plaque created in Vegas because they didn't want to they didn't want to showcase or highlight that this was created with mob money. Uh-huh. So the only safe bet was to have a buoy <laughs> made in a little in the middle of Lake Mead. <laughs> There's this tiny little buoy if you swim out to the very middle. <laughs> yeah, a lot of buoys. <laughs> So one thing I noticed in this scene, and I, we did not, I did not notice it until now, but um, it's kind of a nice little callback to Mikey playing with his lighter. Oh yeah! If you remember, we mm-hmm. established that lighter was kind of like a symbolic of his uh, power, and I think throughout this whole thing, he's very easygoing with his smoking. Like he, he, uh, he seems very in control of his smoking. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of like supposed to. You know, per his whole, he doesn't really get mad in this. Like, can you imagine Sonny in this negotiation? That would be interesting. Well, you know, I never thought about that, but yeah, it wouldn't have ended with Mo Green just walking out of there. Although, I don't know. I mean, as soon as Mo Green says, uh, what's, what's the matter with you? <laughs> well, as soon as Santino hears that Mo Green's beaten up Fredo, I'm sure he wouldn't have even, he would have gotten on the next plane to vegas oh yeah that's probably, probably next true. just gotten in his car and started driving because that would have been faster <laughs> than waiting for the next plane a lot of tolls between new york and vegas 
the Farzini has has a uh, button man at every toll booth between New York and Vegas. <laughs> you mean to yeah, tell? Yeah, it was Farzini. <laughs> as soon as I said the word Farzini, I knew you were going to say that. You weren't even listening to my joke. Just, I like you said there's a lot of toll me. and you have button men at every <laughs> every toll. That's funny. Toll. That's that funny is. stuff. I'm on today. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> I wonder how many other cars got shot, but they say you're just so eager to, to shoot Sonny. Oh there. gosh, as Sonny's driving down I-80 across mm-hmm. to Vegas, he uh, at every toll booth he notices all these other shot up cars <laughs> to the side. <laughs> People who got there before him. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I need reassurances that the button men at the toll booths have 2020 vision. <laughs> Um, wow, I'm feeling good today, Alex. Are you? I'm just riffing. I feel like we, we, we got a good minute. Good. Yeah, I'm making a lot of... I've already come up with two Garbage Pail Kids for the bonus content. Whoa. Yeah. Should I say one now? Why don't you give people a little tease? Okay. For those of you that don't join us for the bonus content, one of our standing items is we create Garbage Pail Kids. You remember those those wacky, disgusting drawings from the 80s? 80s, Alex? They would take those beautiful lovely garbage pail kids and they would put them into some <laughs> wacky packages <laughs> a lot of trademark uh trademark footnotes in that statement alex <laughs> mm-hmm. and so so we just create a wacky uh, garbage pail kids for the this, these particular the particular minute and right. so i've got one so you know how mo green uh, in this minute he he storms out of there sure. so he comes to the party he doesn't stay more than Two or three minutes. No, he doesn't even get to eat anything, and he leaves. Mm-hmm. I think that's his style. He ends up storming out of all these dinner parties he goes to. He never gets to eat. Huh. Alex, he's Moline. Moline. <laughs> I thought you were going to go in a different direction. You were saying like he's only there for two minutes. He's he's always moving around that mo. So they should call him Go Green. <laughs> ah, that would be the other side of it. <laughs> so Perfect. let's combine them both. Go Lean. <laughs> Do you know who I am? I'm Goleen. <laughs> I, I've, I've been to 300 dinner parties this month and haven't eaten at one of them. Not a bite. He <laughs> sounds like Hagen now. <laughs> what would Wait, so is his whole claim to fame that he doesn't eat anything? <laughs> yeah, because he's lean. He's mo lean. I was leaving parties when you <laughs> when you were out and banging cheerleaders two at a time. Oh, that's how, that's how he made his bones. <laughs> like, oh, that's it. It's, I, I made my bones while you were dating cheerleaders. I mean, I didn't I didn't kill people. I, I de- deboned the chicken, and I just left the bones oh. there. That's what I meant. But I didn't eat the chicken. <laughs> I'm Moline. I was born with a rare genetic condition where I didn't. <laughs> I was incapable of growing bones, and it wasn't until you were in college that I made my bones. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You got all biotech on us. <laughs> Awesome. So those are great garbage field kids. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to hear more of that kind of garbage field kids, go to <laughs> godfatherminute.com slash support. Just a buck a show. Mm-hmm. Um, so what else for this? Did you even give the description in the minute, Alex? Yes. Mo Green did, rejects right. Mikey's offer, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Well, and Fredo tries to mediate this conflict. A That's fluster the bulk Fredo of the sputters yeah. that Mikey shouldn't talk to Mo Green in such a manner. I can tell you're a cartoonist by the way you phrased that. A flustered Fredo <laughs> sputters. Those are very animated words. <laughs> very animated. So what do you think? Uh, what what else do you want to talk about? Well, I think you brought up last week the, the, the Mo punching the table thing. Yeah. Um so it, so okay, so here's what happened. I Mikey says, let me know what you're off, let me know what you want, and and I leave in the morning, let me know. And he like gets up and then I thought he was leaving the room. Mm-hmm. But then later on, Mo Green storms out of the room and Fredo just turns to Mikey and says, Mikey, you know, that whole thing. So mm-hmm. Mikey mm-hmm. doesn't leave the room. He just he which I think is like such a power move to stand up and then just go sit in a different chair and then sit oh, yeah. down there. Yeah. So and add um, to that, you you begin that that whole statement with "I leave in the morning." Yeah, you're dictating the timeline. Mm-hmm. The terms. You set the terms. Yeah. So, but what I thought was interesting was, even though I think that is a power move, much like Mo Green's power move of pounding the table, it happens off screen. Like he just gets up, and mm-hmm. the next thing you know, he's sitting in a different chair. So yeah. So I didn't know if that was like, um, 
the other characters are always making power moves while while they're not on camera. Yeah. <laughs> this is essentially <laughs> the problem with the uh, with the thing. Do you think Mo Green learned his power move slamming the table from Don Zalucci? <laughs> Probably Don, the Detroit Don. Remember that was his move. Or did they both get it from Hyman Roth? Mm. Although we never see him bang it. That doesn't seem like a Roth move. Mm-mm, it's a bit. No. It's, it's too crude. Yeah. Yeah. Mo Green saying stupid things, pounding his fists. <laughs> well, in the book, there is there is some a little bit Puzo writes about Michael's posture and standing, and it goes down a little differently in the book. In the book, Michael stands up, and then just that's his cue for everyone to leave, and then Hagen walks to the door and opens it, and then people leave. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought was going to happen. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, so uh, let, me, let me make sure I got that right. Let's see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here it is. Uh, I'll get to some of this stuff later, but because we're talking about this now, he had not one. This is about Michael Puzo writes. He had not once raised his voice, but his words had a sobering effect on both Green and Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> Michael stared at both of them, moving away from the table to indicate that he expected them both to leave. Mm. Hagen went to the door and opened it. Both men left without saying good night. And mm. it was before all that that um that um Michael chastises Freddie. So, so he, he does so he does in the book it. he does it publicly, yeah. Wow. Michael said formally, Freddie, you're my Freddie, you're my older brother. I have respect for you, but don't ever take sides with anybody against a family again. I won't even mention it to the Don. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so he says, could you read it again? Mm-hmm. That last part? Yeah, the whole... the whole, uh, Freddy, you're my older brother. I have respect for you. Oh, that was it. In the movie, he takes out the part about respect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know why. <laughs> yeah. That's why Freddy is so Fredo is so jonesing for respect in the movie. Yeah, because all those lines got cut out from the book. <laughs> Mike, get well respect like Puzo wrote in the book. That is funny because it's almost like setting up the whole plot of Godfather Two. Because he says, you know, mm-hmm. I respect you and don't take sides against the family. Both <laughs> yeah. both things that were. Uh... <laughs> Mikey, they should. You should. Coppola should have left those lines in the movie from me. <laughs> Fredo, get in the car. We can put those lines back in. It's not too late. <laughs> I can't wait to get to that scene. Oh, yeah. That's going to be, I'm, I'm pre-ordaining that an overdub alert. <laughs> <laughs> what else you had, Alex? Uh, well, Mo stands up and says, do you know who I am? I'm Mo Green, which is, <laughs> I haven't eaten in four days. <laughs> He eats a lot of salad. They call me Mo Greens. <laughs> <laughs> Mo Green. That could be his uh, his PSA. You know, as a mobster, you're required yeah. to do so much public service work. Yeah. To keep uh, keep good with the the local government. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mo Greens. <laughs> well, to say yeah, but don't but don't double cross him because he'll kill you. <laughs> Oh, he'll kill, he'll kill you with all that skimming. Oh, come on. Let us get back to the oh. minute. Uh, so it, it, I, when I was hearing him say that, I had a twinge of envy for Mo Green. Mm, tell me more. Well, because I don't think I don't think my name could ever strike fear or intimidation into anyone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I wish I had like 10% of Mo Green's confidence that him saying, you know who I am? I'm Mo Green. That, that Mike, you'd be suddenly like, oh, well, sorry, Mo. You know what I mean? That he would suddenly, that he thinks that that would make him back down. Is, yeah. So. Well, it's funny. I think <laughs> I have a suggestion for you. Me? But yeah, before I get to it, I think. You want to know Mo, who Mo- is the real <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> I already know who the real Alex Robinson is behind this curtain. By the way, I can't even see Alex. He's behind this COVID-19 COVID protection curtain. That's the way I like it. Mo Green probably built his reputation by saying that over and over again. It's he had branding. This, he started nowhere. So yeah. the first... I would started say, nowhere. I would say, <laughs> I'd say the first 700 to 800 times he said that, yeah. people didn't know who he was. But every time he said it, that person yeah. was bound to tell other people, like, whoa, this crazy guy, Mo Green, was laying into me. I don't know who yeah. he is. 
so little by little, it became a, a self fulfilling oh. prophecy. Maybe that's the maybe that's what so you, you need, gotta do. That's you my recommendation. Start. You just got to start doing it, and Fake then it eventually till you make it'll it. work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you gonna follow it up with, though? That's the key. I'm Mo Green. No, you get to say I'm Alex. Do you know who I am? I'm Alex Robinson. I I'm Mo Green. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's your <laughs> shtick? Uh, I well, I guess it would depend on who I was talking to, because because you'd have to you have to customize it to the person who. Like he, Mo Green wouldn't have said, "I've got my bones while you were dating, while you were dating cheerleaders." To Sonny, that wouldn't have made any yeah. sense. He would have said, "I would, I made my bones while you were beating up, uh, beating up what's his or the husband's name again, Carlo. Carlo, mm-hmm. I made my bones while you were beating up Carlo." Yeah, <laughs> starting to sound like McCluskey there. <laughs> God damn it! Stand him up, <laughs> Fredo! Stand him up. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to Mo Green, McCluskey, and um. <laughs> And uh, Waltz all yelling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Have a have a panel argument. <laughs> I wish Mo Green had turned to one of his bodyguards and said, Stand him up. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd be the best moderator for that three person argument panel? Oh boy. I I f- it's tempting to say someone else loud. Hmm. But I don't think that's true because no. like you, I, if anything, I would say maybe uh, the Don because you really have to pay, listen closely to understand what he's saying. So maybe <laughs> you know, make everyone else talk quieter because the Don's all blah, 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 blah. Like, they yeah. couldn't yell over him. You know? Well, and let's face it, you really wouldn't be able to moderate much. Mm-hmm. You would really have to just let them do their thing. Mm-hmm. But occasionally you'd have to interject and pose a new question. Yeah. Uh, cause I guess I also feel like if the Don just started talking, everyone else would shut up because of the Don, cause he's the Don. You know? Yeah. Well, Alex, if you were talking to Mikey in this scene, what would you say? I would say you don't come to Las Vegas and talk to a man like, like Mo Green like that. <laughs> um, you well, gotta so- start with, I, you know who I am? I'm Alex Robinson. <laughs> you don't come to <laughs> Uh, well, the other th- the other uh, alternative I was going to say is that Mo Green um, has periodic bouts of amnesia. Mm. So when he stood up, he was like, do you know who I am? And then he remembered in the middle of it. He's like, I'm Mo Green. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you're saying he does that to as a as a coping strategy? No, he literally from time he is? because he took one too many blows to the head from oh. Hyman Roth. Like periodically, he'll just literally forget who he is. <laughs> <laughs> please do you know who i am yeah do you know who i am and do you know when the last time i ate <laughs> he needs people to remind him to eat and <laughs> remind him who he is yeah so fredo's classic line alex you don't come to las vegas and talk to a man like mo green like that so this was the countdown minute right this, this is it. this is the one this is the titular line this is it should we play one more time alex let's do it for old for old time's sake all right give us a casey case from, what do you call that a lead-in and now coming in at number one here's a long distance dedication it reads dear casey i love the godfather it's one of my favorite movies my brother and i do a podcast about it we love the f- scene where Fredo says not to talk to Mo Green like that. Could you play that song from the countdown? Signed, Confused in Quarantine. Well, Confused in Quarantine, we have good news. And coming in at number one, it's... You don't talk to a man like Mo Green, parentheses, like that, close parentheses.
you Don't you talk to a man like Molly Like that When Corin Fagan He built his town And there isn't even a plan Got in Vegas No back in Vegas Don't you talk to a man like Molly Like that He built his town Thanks, Alex. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss that yeah, song. Just, and uh, we've got a few requests to turn it into a YouTube video. Mm. So I am working on that. Mm, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of fuzzy about the direction. Do I just do still frames from the movie? Do I do some live, not live foot, but new footage with you in it? Do I just put still shots of you in there? How funny do we make it? Mm. How much time in my life do I have to dedicate to this? It's a lot of questions. Yeah. So, but I'm working on it. Hey, you know what? You asked, we'll answer. <laughs> so, uh, now that you've, um, now that we have played that song for the last time, mm-hmm. we will be um, releasing this as a standalone single to our Patreons. Mm-hmm. So, you can add that to your uh, mixtapes if you want. And um, we're not going to play the new song yet, but uh, in the coming weeks, we will debut the new song. Counting down to the next big moment in The Godfather. <laughs> awesome. Well, Alex, I do have some items from the book. Okay. You ready to hear about Puzo's ideas? Sure. Okay. Overall, the scene is the same, but there are some key differences, Alex. Mm-hmm. Page, what you got for me? Page 386, Puzo writes. So this is right after Michael says he's going home, make him an offer. Green said savagely, you son of a bitch. You think <laughs> get the hell out of here. You, you think you can just brush me off like that, eh? <laughs> I killed more men than you before I could jerk off. Whoa. I'll fly to New York and talk to the Don himself. I'll make him an offer. Ooh. Pause. What do you make of that? Well, first of all, the much dirtier language yeah. than 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 you were dating cheerleaders. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. classic Puzo. The Mo Green is definitely cruder, mm-hmm. ruder, and cruder in the book. <laughs> Crude Green. <laughs> um, and um, a, and he, he he threatens to fly to New York and talk to the Don himself and to make him an offer. Yeah. So it's wow. almost like he's he's turning the tables on yeah. the uh, on, on the guy. He'll you, cut his horses out off. See how he likes. It. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll get one of his leading men to move from marijuana to heroin. <laughs> so why? So presumably Mo Green did not follow through on his threat and go that's see correct. the Godfather. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that would have been a great scene though. Mm-hmm. You imagine him knocking on the door in the middle of the night. He's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you know, oh, what's the matter? Oh, what's, what are you doing here? Why is there a Jew on my doorstep at night? <laughs> yeah. And then what? what is he Mo- says, Do you know who I am? You're Mo Green. <laughs> oh, Mo, come on in. <laughs> I know you're coming. <laughs> I, I enjoy your Mo lasses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mo Green. Yeah, it's weird also that um, I'm glad they took that out. Because um, in terms of continuity, it doesn't make sense that Mo would fly personally to talk to Don Corleone. That's right. Because if anything, he would say to Hyman Roth, hey, listen, could you talk to him for me? Yeah. You know, because Hyman's Hyman's his boss. The only reason I, I would have liked to have seen it in there so that later in the movie, there would have been another scene where Mo says, I talked to Don Corleone. <laughs> Wait, you mean to tell you? <laughs> and of course, that would have had to have been overdubbed by, by James Earl Jones, too. <laughs> did you go back and listen to it? No, Sounds like I did James not. I Earl forgot. Jones. I forgot to do it. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Here we a little bit more. Puzo writes, Freddie said nervously to Tom Hagen, Tom, you're the conciliary. You can talk to the Don and advise him. It was then that Michael turned... And full chilly blast of his personality on the two Vegas men. Chilly blast. <laughs> chilly been turned. Michael turned the full chilly blast. <laughs> Sounds like an ice cream uh, 
Oh, I thought it was like a fart. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, it's like they call it Vegas air conditioning. <laughs> Turn the full chili blast of his burn. <laughs> that sounds so stupid. It really sounds like a good humor ice cream thing. <laughs> He turned, Michael turned the full chili blast. Wait, are you saying it's chili flavored ice cream? <laughs> like no, a chili flavored milkshake? Like, no, mom, can I have a, can I get a chili blast? Oh, chili like C-H-I-L-E, yeah, yeah. like the country of chili. <laughs> yeah, no, not, yes, that's right. <laughs> Got it. Uh, and he turned his, his personality on the two Vegas men. The, the Don has sort, has sort of semi-retired, Michael said. Hmm. I'm running the family business now, and I've removed Tom from the conciliary spot. He'll be strictly my lawyer here in Vegas. He'll be moving out with his family in a couple of months to get all the legal work started. So anything you have to say, say it to me. Pause. <laughs> Alex, is it better that Michael says it, or is it better in the movie that no, Tom says it for him? It's better that Tom says it for him. Why? Because it's it's a sign of weakness if you have to boast about your own power. Mm, okay, you know what I mean. Yeah. Or, or like, so that that's what I that like. Yeah. So it would have been better earlier if Mo had one of his bodyguards say, "Hey, do you know who he is? Yeah, exactly. He's Mo Green. Exactly. Yeah. Like if he had a uh, like an assistant who was saying that. Yeah. <laughs> do you know who he is? He's Mo Green. He has at least fifth. 15 or 16 garbage bell kids made up drawn for him. <laughs> How many do you have, huh? Puto writes. I got another garbage bell kid from Mo Green. Are you going to remember or you want to lay it on I'm going to say it now because there's no way I'm going to remember. Okay. It. But, you know, he's been, he's been living in Las Vegas too long with all that nuclear testing. They call him Glow Green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's the first special garbage pail car that glows oh yeah <laughs> that's great <laughs> glow green <laughs> what would the picture look like it would be him but he'd be all like you know it'd be all like radioactive like glow in the dark and he'd have, like, be sitting in like a toxic waste um <laughs> drum <laughs> that's great it's like flesh falling off of him <laughs> puto writes nobody answered michael said formally oh we already did that um so michael in the book talks more to Mo about this deal. He mm-hmm. doesn't just leave it at that. Puto writes, this is Michael, Don't ins- t- he's, he turned to Mo Green, don't insult people who are trying to help you. You do better to use your energy to find out why the casino is losing money. Mm. The Corleone family has big dough invested here and we're not getting our money's worth. Dough. But I, <laughs> but I still didn't come here to abuse you. I offer a helping hand. Well, if you prefer to spit on that helping hand, that's your business. I can't Ooh. say any more. What do you think? I don't know. I'm glad they cut out the scene of him yeah. spitting. That would have been a little <laughs> un- too unbelievable. Yeah. Puto writes, he had not once raised his voice, but his words had a sobering effect on both Green and Freddie. Mike, oh, we talked about it. Michael stared at both of them and uh, Hagen went to the door and opened it. Both men left without saying goodnight. Hmm. here's a little follow-up you don't see in the movie that Puzo writes about the next morning Michael Corleone got the message from Mo Green he would not sell his share of the hotel at any price Hmm. it was Freddie who delivered the message Michael shrugged and said to his brother I want to see Nino before I go back to New York so they go to see uh, that's Johnny's friend yeah they're his childhood friend who they all knew growing up Uh, by the way Nino's in the process of dying He's just from consumption. Is that the term back then? Just partying too hard and not taking care of himself? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that it? Uh, I think consumption is specifically tuberculosis. Oh, gosh. I didn't know that. But, I thought uh, it was overall. Just like generic wear and tear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, Michael, uh, there's a little scene lit here with Nino. And I thought this was a great line. Michael says, Nino, it's good to catch up with you. The Don always asks about you. And Nino's not doing well. Uh, mm-hmm. Nino grinned. It was the old grin. But tell, no teeth. <laughs> tell the Don Tell the Don I'm dying. Tell him show business is more dangerous than the olive oil business. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was thought that was a good line. <laughs> tell it to Khartoum. <laughs> yeah. And so they leave, they're they're um they're at the airport, they're departing. And as Michael boarded the plane with Tom Hagen and Al Neary, Michael turns to Neary and says, did you make him good? Referring to Mo Green. Mm -hmm. Neary tapped his forehead. 
I got Mo Green mugged and numbered up here. Ooh. End of chapter. That means he's going to kill him. Yeah. So I misspoke. I think last minute I said that that Al 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 is the one who ends up killing Mo Green. That's oh really? Right. Yeah, but but he's and he's here. I thought Al killed um, Barzini. Uh, he does in the movie. I'm not sure in the book. Oh, okay. But Al Neary okay. definitely is the one to kill Mo Green in the book. Okay. So that's all I have for the book. I have a few more things from the movie. Okay. Um, the line where he says, I made my bones while you were going out with cheerleaders. Mm-hmm. Um, it's weird that he connects it with Mikey going out with cheerleaders. Yeah. And it made me wonder if like, is this like a very specific incident that Mo remembers when he killed a guy and Mikey was out on a date with cheerleaders? Mm. Yeah. Like it almost sounds like they were like college roommates and, and Mikey was like the, the devil may care casual. Mikey was the Ernie. <laughs> no, Mikey, yeah, Mikey was the Ernie and Mo Green was the Bert. Mm. Of the, Cause you know, mm. Mo Green was all uptight and he was out killing people while he was around, you know, while he was goofing <laughs> around with, with, with cheerleaders. So I like it. I just like the idea well, of a, of a show with Mo Green and uh, Mikey as college roommates. Yeah. What would the show be called? It would be called, um, Mike and Mo. The Mike and Mo show. <laughs> I, I like that idea that they, the cheerleader and him making his bones are connected. How about Michael was a real loser in high school and and he said, oh, Pop, I can't get any dates with girls. And Don says, well, let me, I'm going to call it a favor. So Don Corleone asks Hyman Ross, hey, do you have any young kids that can uh, take care of some of these varsity lettermen so that the cheerleaders don't have anyone to date? <laughs> And so Hyman Roth wow. makes his bones, knocks off a few uh, jocks, mm. and then all the cheerleaders have no one to date. In walks Michael Corleone. Perfect. So right. you just cleared the decks for him. Cleared the whole, the whole varsity football team. <laughs> <laughs> because other than that, there's no other gentleman in the school that, that would get in the way of, of him. No, he takes them all out, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sent him to a girls' college. Yeah. No wonder Mo was really bitter about Michael. Oh, it really no. made him work. <laughs> this was a man with vision. Yeah, he never slept. He was too busy whacking the whole football team. <laughs> uh, also, when Fredo says to Tom, "Tom, you can talk to the Don." Yeah, I think it's interesting that, and Mikey does it too. I guess in the book that they refer to him as the Don as opposed to Pop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. um yeah. I guess it's because there's someone else. Do you think that's because there's other people here who aren't family? Or do you think it's just because in this role, it's his role as the godfather, it's the Don, not as their father? That I thing. think it's the first. It's because it's mixed company. Right. It's yeah. they're really talking business. Yeah. What about the classic line Hagen said? It's classic to us. I don't know if it's funny to anyone else. That, <laughs> now, the, Dem is, the Don is semi the Don is semi retired. Well, first of all, the way he <laughs> says he makes it sound like he says Don is semi retired. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so he's semi retired. <laughs> yeah, I just think that's great. We, for some reason, we always joke about that about being well, semi retired. Because <laughs> I guess in this particular instance, like, what does that mean exactly? Like, oh, I only. I only have people killed on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Or, <laughs> no, or, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe. Well, he's still mentoring Michael. Maybe. maybe, or maybe he's still handling some business. But it, it must be he's semi-retired. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of when uh, I was at a comic book show one time, and um, you know, there's people there selling comics that they wrote and drew, and everyone has their pitch. You know, what's your book about? And then you kind of go into from saying the same thing over and over again. You kind of fall into a patter. Mm-hmm. And there was this one guy we talked to who was doing a uh, like some kind of superhero we comic, and we're like, "So what's your comic about?" He's like, "Well." It's about a um, this guy who's a uh, like a multimillionaire, and he's also a part time assassin. And mm. I, we were we just were laughing at the the part time assassin thing. <laughs> it's like he can't quite pay the bills just being a millionaire. Oh, yeah. He has to take on <laughs> some assassination jobs every now and then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, well, what is the difference between a part time assassin and a full time assassin? Ah, uh, benefits. 
<laughs> or they, lack they, of. They have you killed just under the amount that yeah. they just have to start giving you. Oh, that's right. Those jerks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what jerks. It's the gig economy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, now you get paid by the paid by the assassination rather than okay. just like a, no one's a full time anymore. <laughs> I'm an that's, independent contractor assassination. So yeah. Assassinator. <laughs> that's like a. That's that's like bonus era, right? He just works works per cadaver, mm. right? He gets paid by the by the body. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love America. I love except all, for the day, day. I love all America's dead bodies. <laughs> so many. It turns out that he's this really gruesome. He's a murderer. <laughs> it's <like> a cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love Americans. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he wants his daughter's assailants killed. He just, <laughs> when I saw them, they looked meaty and delicious. And like, of course, they had the, the daughter had her jaw wired shut, so she couldn't. That's that's what was like the ultimate insult to a cannibal that his daughter oh. would not be able to eat. Also, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> they they saw my daughter with her jaw shut and laughed. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I have a couple bonus, of more. Sarah, you 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 gonna eat the bodies of these kids? No, that is not justice. <laughs> they did not eat your daughter. <laughs> no matter what this cannibal says. <laughs> uh, after all, we're we're not cannibals. Uh, <laughs> um. So <laughs> one thing I noticed watching this minute when he goes over and starts talking when Fredo starts talking to Tom mm -hmm. and poor Johnny Fontaine is sitting there <laughs> right between them and he looks like so hard like he's trying not to look at anyone he's just kind of like staring straight ahead yeah I noticed that too he's just he's probably been in these situations before just got to keep your mouth shut and well, not look at anyone it's not weigh in. be a tough situation because it must be so uncomfortable for Johnny because here he is on the one hand it's his godfather's son I guess his godbrother who's now, I guess, the, in charge. So you're like, well, like, I didn't sign my loyalty to this guy. Loyalty was to his father. Mm -hmm. So, but then on the other hand, you also have Mo Green, who runs Las Vegas. And for Johnny, that's like, that's got to be a big thing. So, yeah. so like, who does he... Mm -hmm. Like Mo Green really could have pushed it and said, Johnny, I'm, I'm, I'm like, he's the jerk in this situation, right? Made Johnny pick a side. Make but, everyone choose sides right there. But luckily he, uh, he didn't for Johnny's sake. It'd be great if in that moment Mo tries to recruit everyone in the room to his side. <laughs> Hagen, you're being pushed out, right? The Godfather don't even that kind of muscle anymore. You're not even his, his he's not even your we client anymore. Come, you're moving out here anyway. Work for me. We need pit bosses. We need bell hops. We need desk clerks. <laughs> bell hops. <laughs> we'll give you hopping lessons, desking lessons. <laughs> there wasn't enough time, Michael. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of Tom Hagen, he's sitting there and there's that, did you notice that weird sculpture next to him? No. There's a, a weird sculpture on the, uh, like on the table or something. I don't even know if it's hanging on the wall or, or standing on a table, but, um, I, it looks, maybe it's just because I'm a cartoonist, uh, but to me it looks like this, the sculpture has a giant wiener pointing at Tom Hagen. Oh, funny. <laughs> so, wow. so what that whether is that supposed to be symbolic of something mm -hmm. or? Uh, but I do think it is symbolic that he has the same reduced status as Johnny Fontaine. That him and Johnny Fontaine are just kind of sitting there, watching this whole thing. Yeah, right just sitting on the side, moping, yeah. moping, mm -hmm. moping, Mo yeah. <laughs> moping. <laughs> <laughs> moping green. <laughs> yeah, um, well, and if you think about it, Hagen and and Johnny both are are upset at their their new lots in life. Hagen's pushed out. Johnny's locked into this new contract. That's true, yeah. yeah. Mikey, as soon as he becomes the boss, immediately starts alienating everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you bring in your own new people. Yeah. Right? Except for Clemenza. Yeah. Um, what else do you have, Alex? Well, so the line where he says, you don't come to talk to Las Vegas like that. Mm-hmm. There's a fantastic re line reading by John. Oh, that's great. John Cazale. Yeah. That, that, by the way, is in, I would say, top 10 iconic lines. <laughs> I'm serious. Not, and not just with us, but. So you think if you went up to a regular person and said that, they would know what you meant? I think if you kept asking people, if you did a sampling across the world of the, of the top 
10 lines and if they could get to number 10 like mm-hmm. some people might only know one or oh, yeah. none but if they could get to 10 i think that one would be in there hmm interesting right 10 a lot of lines it is a lot of lines yes yeah. huh what do you think about the line um you know there's something i don't like about it which is that he says that Mm-hmm. twice he says you don't come to las vegas and talk to a man like mo green like that so he yeah. says like that uh or yeah he says that i don't know the repeating of like and the repeating of that yeah to me it seems um i guess it's more natural because that's the way people speak they don't yeah they it's don't consciously write out okay i'm gonna use, like when i wrote flustered flustered fredo originally i just wrote like like fredo says this but then i was like well i should be more descriptive in it so Anyway, um, it's a great line, and um, he does a good reading. Mm. Have you ever been in a position where you've had to talk to someone about someone else like that? Like, hey, hey you were just in the presence of a great artist. You, you really sh- you should have asked him for his autograph, or, or you shouldn't have said this. Have you ever counseled anyone like that? I Well, I've definitely been counseled that... Um, I've definitely been in Mikey's shoes where someone's after a meet something was over, somebody said, Oh, you really shouldn't have brought up X mm, mm-hmm. uh, or something like that. Yeah. It wasn't specific to the person, like because the person was so powerful like that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it was just more like, you know, a potential embarrassment situation. Mm, so. Etiquette. I've never been um, someone that I've never been the Mo Green in this situation where people felt as far as I know, where people felt like they couldn't, talk to me in a certain manner that you, well, you, you don't know about it that you know of right right but the fact that i've had people yell at me and stuff that means i don't think i'm there i don't think i'm the mo green in that yeah. situation well, although we, i should have said do you know who i am <laughs> yeah you, there's only one way to get there alex yeah, you gotta yeah. you got to have vision you gotta keep <laughs> saying that sure you gotta be a little uh, headstrong sometimes i think every episode we should now practice saying that it'll become our mantra if we do it every episode we'll start to get the confidence yeah right so so we have to say i'm mo green yeah like, do you know who i am i'm Andy Robinson. Oh, so we're not saying. And then you say something positive about yourself. Hmm. Let's try it. Go ahead. Well, you you say something positive about yourself while also running down the other person. Yeah, that's a little more challenging without without the person there. Oh, without the specifics of the person. Yeah. Okay. Do you know who I am? I'm Alex Robinson. I started a Godfather Minute podcast while you were still out there. And then whatever the other yeah. person was doing. Yeah, perfect. Like that. That's great. It's perfect. Yeah. All right, well, that's all I have for the minute. That's all I have, too. Um, I have this one note which has nothing to do with The Godfather. What? Are you interested in hearing it? I, I, it's, I need a little bit more information. <laughs> <laughs> I can always cut it out, I guess. Yeah. So in, the, in the, these days of quarantine and isolation, I've been making up a lot of music in my head and thinking weird thoughts like everyone is, everyone is right Alex mm-hmm. so <laughs> I think I want to start re-recording popular songs mm-hmm. but change the lyrics slightly yeah but just change the verbs to a different tense example this was how we did it <laughs> <laughs> this was how we did it shouldn't it be that was how we did it <laughs> Oh, that's right. That was how we did it. I was walking around. I was singing that. That's really funny. It, it's catchy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm claiming like I created the catchiness of it. So would you say like I wanted to hold your hand? However, wherever you want to take it. That's a little harder. It's got to yeah, fit. Yeah, the, the rhythm the, doesn't really The meter's got to fit. Let's so. see. Uh so you're changing it, make it into the past tense or just changing the tense? However tense you want. So like instead of like, like if you could do this, with, uh, that was how, or this is how we'll do it. <laughs> so you could say, when I see her standing there. Yeah, exactly. It's fun. Yeah. Just pick any popular song and change yeah. the words to it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we could do that more in the, with the Beatles songs in the, in the bonus content. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all I have, Alex. Well, there's one thing we got to do now, and that's rate this sucker. Mm-hmm. You ready? Yeah. Is there any Is there any question? Let's not even count it up. Let's just say the number. You ready? Okay. Ready? <gasps> one. Oh, we're not counting it. We could if you want to. 
Okay, no, no, let's not count it. I'll do it silently. It's so good, let's just say it. Okay. Five. Five. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And that was with a sheet in between us. Yeah, we we couldn't even see each other. (laughs) I saw the sheet move when you said five. Mm. (laughs) Which makes me glad (laughs) there's a sheet in between us, by the way. All right, so that'll wrap up um, episode 146, I believe. That's right. And uh, so we're going to move on to the bonus content. We already gave you some free garbage pail kids, but there's more to come. Mm. So, um, all right. So until next time, you don't Don't come come to to Las Vegas Vegas and talk talk to to a a man man like Mo Green like that.